History has always been my favorite subject, especially when it comes to the history of Japan. You must be wondering why JPT is bringing up this topic today, as he usually don't upload such videos. Well, let me tell you, there is no loss in watching videos which is not related to Aronatal. Knowledge can be gained from anywhere. Anyway, today I'm going to tell you a story of a person who was a soldier of Imperial Japanese Army during the Second World War. Through him, we can understand how loyalty and honor was engraved within the heart of Japanese people. However, he was the last Japanese soldier to surrender after Second World War. So today in this video, we'll talk about Hiro Onoda. In 1945, Japanese second lieutenant Hiro Onoda and a small squad of three men were the only survivors of an American invasion of Lubang Island in the Philippines during the Second World War. To defend the island until his dying breath, Onoda continued to fight against the Allies. Until in 1974, 29 years later, the Japanese surrendered. However, Hiro Onoda carried on fighting the Second World War three decades after the war has ended. After Japan surrendered in September 1945, news of the war's end reached the island, but Hiro Onoda and his men refused to believe it, thinking the newspaper they saw were calculated designed to trick them into coming out of the hiding. Since Hiro Onoda and his few men kept on continuing the guerrilla warfare within the island of Philippines in Lubang, thinking that the war is still going on, Hiro Onoda and his few men lived in a cave in the mountain of Lubang Island. However, the days and months passed by, his men died or surrendered one by one. Although all of them were as much as dedicated as Onoda to the Imperial Japan. However, in the mountains of Lubang Island, Hiro Onoda did not have much in the way of standard supplies. He just lived in the cave of Lubang on bananas, coconut, wild boar, hens, etc. all gathered from the wilderness. He built huts out of bamboo and maintained his weapon and uniforms as if he expected a superior officer to show up at any moment and conduct an inspection. Since he refused to believe that the war has ended, he was declared dead in 1959 by the government. However, in 1974, a young man named Norio Suzuki went on a quest to find Lieutenant Onoda and incredibly, Suzuki managed to find Onoda and also managed to get Onoda to consider that the war has ended. But Hiro Onoda refused to believe until he received an official order from his commander. So Norio Suzuki returned to Japan to find his commander. And also he managed to find his commander, Major Taniguchi, working in a bookstore. Together with Norio Suzuki and Onoda's brother, Major Taniguchi went to Lubang Island to tell Onoda to get over with it. So finally, after getting an official order from his commanding officer, after many years, Hiro Onoda finally accepted to surrender. Hiro Onoda gave up his sword to the President of Philippines. So the Filipinos president applauded Onoda's courage and loyalty to the Imperial Japan and respectfully gave the sword back to Onoda and also granted him full pardon of his killing of seven Filipino people while living in the island. Hence, Hiro Onoda returned Japan as a national hero. Japanese media adored Onoda, writing glowing headlines about his incredible story and holding him up as an inspirational symbol of duty for the country. Hiro Onoda, the last Japanese imperial soldier to emerge from hiding in a jungle in the Philippines and surrender 29 years after the end of World War II, died at the age of 91. The Japanese government praised Onoda for his strong will to live an indomitable spirit. Before and during the war, Japanese were taught absolute loyalty to the nation and the emperor. Onoda refused to give up all his life he spent fighting in the jungle of Philippine Island. There is no doubt that the veins of every Japanese has indeed the honor, the loyalty and the discipline. <laughs>